Welcome back to the lesson that's so nice we felt the need to do it twice. We're back dealing with more exponential versus linear. So in the first part of this lesson, we did talk a little bit about the linear and exponential models. The linear model is really just slope-intercept form, where the exponential model is y equals a times r to the x. As we know with slope-intercept form, b is our starting point, and m is our slope, or how we change. With exponential, it's very similar. A is going to be our starting point, and R is our multiplication factor. That's what we're going to be multiplying by each time. So we talked about linear having a consistent amount you add by, and that's the slope, and exponential having a consistent amount that you multiply by, and that's that multiplication factor. So these concepts are very similar to each other. So let's take a look at a problem that involves an exponential and a linear growth. In the first part of this problem, we're told that our grandpa sets up a birthday deal. On the day you were born, so when you're age zero, he's going to give you a $10 gift. Each year, he's going to increase your gift by $20. So on your first birthday, he's going to give you $30, then $50, then $70, then $90, then $110. He's increasing his gift by $20 each year. If we wanted to know the gift on your eighth birthday, we'd have to go one, two, three more birthdays over, so three more sets of $20 over, which would be an increase of $60 or 170 If you want, I can fill in the gaps to see how this growth is working. So our eighth birthday gift will be $170. Now the next question would ask me to scoot a little bit further over to now the ninth birthday to see that it's $190, or the tenth birthday to see it's 210 to figure out when it finally is more than $200, and that's on that 10th birthday. Now, this is starting, I'm starting to run out of space. What might be more valuable for me if I skip C as I'm supposed to now figure out the 16th birthday is to instead write a rule. Letting age be our x and y be our gift amount, we know we're going to write the equation using slope-intercept form since this is linear. It's going up by the same amount every time, 20, 20, 20, 20. That consistent change of 20 is our slope. And then all we need to know is our y-intercept, which would be that first gift of $10. Remember, m is how much you're going up by every time, and b is where you start. Now that I have this equation, I can use this to figure out the 16th birthday. Since age is our x, and 16 is the age we're interested in, we're going to plug 16 in for x and we get 20 times 16 plus 10, which is 320 plus 10, or $330. So our answer to this question is $330. Now it's grandma's turn. Grandma's gonna give you a nickel on the day you're born, and then every year she's gonna double that. So you start off with a nickel, and then we're doubling it. So after one year you have 10 cents, and then 20 cents, then 40, then 80, then 160, or $1.60. Now for this 8th birthday, we could stretch this table out a little bit if we want, and it looks like our gift would be $12.80. Now remember, at the 8th birthday mark for Grandpa, he was giving you $170, so it seems right now like Grandpa's giving us the better deal. Now this time, we're multiplying by 2 each time to get to the next Y. That makes this exponential. Again, X is our age, Y is our gift amount, and our rule is going to use the model y equals a times r to the x. We need to know the starting amount, which is still that y-intercept, and then we need to know that consistent amount we multiply by, which was 2. And this is our exponential model. Now they ask us if we could choose one of these two deals, which one would we take? Well, since we got Grandpa's gift all the way out to our 16th birthday, I know that's $330. Let's take a look. You know, early on after eight birthdays, Grandpa's given us a lot more money. Let's see what happens after 16 birthdays. For Grandma, we're going to use this model, and we're going to replace that X with 16. And at this point, Grandma's giving us $3,276.80. That's a lot more than that $330 gift that Grandpa's giving us. Now remember, Grandpa, his equation was linear. So the amount of money he's giving you will follow a straight line. Grandma, on the other hand, is following an exponential curve. So eventually, Grandma's going to catch up to Grandpa. 
which obviously happens sometime before the 16th birthday, since by the 16th birthday, Grandma's giving you a much bigger gift. And this gap is only going to get greater and greater as we get further and further down the road. So I concluded that eventually Grandma's deal is going to be worth a lot more money, so let's choose that one. And this whole problem helps highlight the differences between linear and exponential. While linear might start off worth more, in the long run, exponential is always going to catch up and then move way ahead. Now this next problem gives us several different models, some linear and some exponential, and asks us which has the greatest rate of change and which has the least rate of change. Well remember, exponentials start low and slow and then spike, so eventually they always have the greatest rate of change. Out of the three exponentials that we're seeing here, h of x spikes the earliest, meaning it has the greatest rate of change. The linears always end up getting caught up to, since they grow at a constant rate. This particular linear is the lowest at the end of the graph, so therefore it has the lowest rate of change, or the least rate of change. Now we're going to wrap things up with some multiple choice questions. We're being asked to match the model to the table. This can be done with some process of elimination. First thing we want to determine is this linear or exponential. It looks to me like we're multiplying by 3 each time to get to the next y. That means this is exponential. So I can rule out the linear options. And since I said we're multiplying by 3, that's the change number. And the change number, or the multiplication factor in the form y equals a times r to the x, is this middle number. Since I see 3 in the middle of c and not in the middle of d, that means C is the only answer that makes sense. In this next problem, we're told that we start with five students, and each month the number triples. This means we're always multiplying by three. That means we're exponential again, so we can rule out the linear options. If we start at five, and the multiplication factor is three, we should see five on the outside and three on the inside of the parentheses, so this must be B. So we say answer B is right. Sometimes they're going to follow up and ask us to pick one of the wrong answers, let's go linear, and tell a story for that answer. If D were the right answer, that would mean that we start with 5, since that's the number not attached with the X, and then we go up by 3 each month, since it would be a linear problem. This next one says that we start with 24 trees, and then each year we have twice as many trees as the year before. Again, this is exponential because we're multiplying by 2 each time. So again, I rule out the linears. I look for the number on the outside, the starting amount, to be 24. And the number on the inside, the multiplication amount, to be 2. So this is A. This next problem talks about Grace learning how to play violin. She starts with 30 minutes each day of practice. And each month, she increases that amount by 5. Increases means addition. So she's adding 5 each time. This is a linear problem, since it's adding every time. So we can rule out the exponentials, and we're looking to start with 30 and increase by 5. Be careful, because these aren't exactly written in slope-intercept form. We're used to seeing y equals mx plus b, but they've been writing it as y equals b plus mx. The number attached to x is always your change amount and the number alone is always your starting amount. Remember how we used to do start plus change x? So since we're starting at 30, that should be the number that's not attached to x, and since we're changing by five, that should be the number attached to x. So this is D. Finally, we're told that Bill has to pay off his student loans. Each year he pays off half of what he owes. He starts owing 9,000. He's going to multiply that by one half each time to determine how much he's going to pay off. Anytime you see those words half or double, that means you're multiplying by the same amount every time. In this case, one half. This makes this exponential. So we're looking for the number being raised to the exponent to be this one half, and the number on the outside to be that 9,000, meaning our answer is B. Remember that if you're getting to your next y by multiplying each time, you're dealing with an exponential function. If you're always adding to get to your next y, you're dealing with a linear function. When comparing a linear and exponential function, if you have enough time to wait, the exponential will always catch up to the linear. That's it for this lesson. See you next unit.